Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. It is a noon hour on Thursday, folks. Ted Ross in downtown Honolulu with uh, momentarily transposed to Waimanalo Beach, the way it looks. Anyway, uh, we have our show, uh, Where the Drone Leads, where we bring to our, our audience uh, issues and information about the use of drones, issues that deal with uh, law enforcement, with regulations and such. But today, we have an incredible bunch of guests here in the studio. The studio is full. We can't put any more people in this already <laughs> jam packed. We have Kainoa Jimenez. Kainoa, thanks Hello, for coming Ted. on again. Thank you. Thank you. Like that. Okay, Kyle is uh, uh, Chief Technology Officer at Kolea Gold LLC. Yes, sir. In Hawaii here, which has been a leader in drones and education and uh, getting into production business these days. Yes, sir. And we have... Landon. Landon Hamara. Yes. And Eric Tarate, Tarate yes. from uh, uh, Bowers and Kubota Consulting in Waipahu. Yes. Joining us for the first time. Mm -hmm. First timers on the show. And the reason you guys are here is that you guys are the leaders in the company, which is a leading company using drones in commercial construction around here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So we, we really like to bring folks who are making a positive stride forward in drones onto the show and talk about it, talk about how it started, talk about where you're going, and issues you see that, uh, that we at the university should pay attention to in terms of design or requirements that drones should have, or maybe even the software that, that is used to process the, uh, the work uh, uh, post-light. So tell us a little bit um, uh, about how and how you guys were able to convince the boss that it was a good idea to get drones into the construction business very early in the use now of drones in that business. So, um, so uh, Kevin, who is our drone leader of our group, um, his son does a lot of drone racing, and he <laughs> kind of put two okay. and two together. Yeah. And Kevin just started doing some research and realizes that drones in the construction industry is huge. So we kind of jumped on that as, uh, as soon as we could. Um, we worked with Drone Services Hawaii mm -hmm. to kind of get some pilots and kind of trying to start off the company small, making sure we follow the proper procedures, following the guidelines that the FAA has to make sure that uh, we don't break any laws or anything like that. Well, that's great. So uh, actually, Mike Elliott, who is Drone Services mm -hmm. Hawaii, has been on the show many times. He hosts the show from time to time and, <laughs> and always been down to his yes, shop sir. a lot and uh, working mm -hmm. together. So that's great. So you started from the perceptions and, and uh, enthusiasm and the mm -hmm. values you could see in drone racing mm -hmm. and brought drone, used drone racing as the entry point to bring yeah. that into your company and then convince the boss that this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And Eric, you're the engineer uh, on the team, and there's several more of you on this team who aren't here, obviously, but uh, from an engineering perspective, how are you guys actually uh, using the drones? These so days? we're actually using it by collecting data. Um, basically, there's different platforms out there that um, can actually do the same. So right now, we're kind of venturing to different ones, but uh, the latest project that we worked on, um, we used a program and a platform called Propeller. So what it is is um, you s they have like these baseball plates which establish ground control points, and you place them sporadically within your project area. Uh, it collects data uh, similar to point clouds, mm -hmm. and what it does is um, once it collects enough, you probably leave it about an hour or so to collect enough information then actually you'd use uh, like an application called like um, maps made easy or something similar so you can actually create your flight path once you have that um, you can then simulate uh, or create your flight path and then with the drone and those baseball plates which is your ground control points it actually collects the data similar to like how a surveyor would go with his um, surveying uh, crew and whatnot you know, and taking off um, points point shots and whatnot but Basically, um, this is like a more of a really fast and more accurate way of getting this data. And then from there, we would actually process the data, well, propeller processes the data. And then from there, we actually can use, they'll create like contours, um, existing elevations that we can actually use, and we can actually implement that into our design projects that we're doing. And that's currently a project that we're kind of doing right now. So it sounds like you're finding this to be something useful in terms of saving time or saving effort or putting less people at risk. There's some value coming back to you that you're getting out of that use of drones. Even though you had to spend money for them, you would take the test and, and then uh, 
uh, by the software, that's still in net a value. Exactly. And in wow. the, the program we're actually using, so if you went out and just hired a surveyor, you would get like a CAD file from them, but no photos. This one now you have a photo and it's an actual 3D draped over your point cloud. So you actually have this three dimensional draped imagery so that you, you can view. So you pretty much drew them a map. A visual a 3D visual map, map, yes. So basically you could look at it as a USGS topographic map, but with an actual protrusion of the map. So you can see contours and terrains and all that. So you can visualize what you're dealing with in terms of the lay down of the land and the landform. Uh, and then how about during construction, during the evolution of the construction <laughs> as the land is cleared and the work is done? Do you use it as a way to check progress and yes. to look at where the assets are and logistics and all those things, are that useful as well? Yes, so um, as Ke um, Eric mentioned, we do also use Propeller and this other app called Drone Deploy. We're experimenting with both of them, trying to see which is the best for our company. Um, but both offer a feature where we can verify like a quick snapshot of how much earth is being moved. Mm -hmm. So if a contractor is saying they move X amount of dirt, we can go out and verify and say, yes, Mr. Contractor, you did move X amount of dirt. So that way they're, we're, we're protecting the owner, the, the, the client, to make sure they're not getting ripped off. And it's a lot quicker than the old-fashioned way. That's pretty cool. And I'm really intrigued by the fact that you're finding, you're experimenting with different software and different uh, flying platforms. Mm -hmm. And then, so in your minds, will be some sort of an optimum solution or an optimum that would be useful that we at the university would like very much to hear about. Mm -hmm. And so at Kainoa, over in the, uh, dealing with the, uh, the high schools that you deal with. Yes, so currently, the reason why these folks are on the show is because I wanted to bring these folks on and introduce you to this very wonderful man. He is one of the leading leading prospects of the UAV industry. And you that guys... and a buck and a half will get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I know what to do now. <laughs> but, um, these guys are a product of your work, and to show you that you know all your work and all your effort, it is paying off, and we local boys see it. This is a product. He's a doctor. I heard we were speaking the earlier, right? Archaeology, architecture, right? Exactly. Yep. He is a doctor. The only place and you can get it is at UH. A drone pilot as well. So you know he's breaking <laughs> boundaries right here. And so you can take this enthusiasm <clears throat> and this success is going on yes. and transport that back into the to the high schools so yes. the work you do yes so talk about that where that's been going since we met up at Anui Nui in Palolo so last the time. last time we've spoken was yes we were, we just finished a program six weeks uh, at Anui Nui schools teaching these two young um, aspiring young Hawaiian men who's going to be very um, future Kalego droners I see you guys out there um, <laughs> So we finished this program, and it's been some time since the last time we spoke and been on the show. And first and foremost, thank you for having me here, and thank you for having us here. Um, secondly, currently, Micah is currently working on another lead for us. And so currently, we are both graduates of Marino schools. And so he's currently working alongside Marino school, the elementary, and the high school. And we're trying to implement UAVs into the STEM programs, into what is it? What is their understanding as the MX program there? And so, we're looking to help out the MX program with Myron Allers and looking to connect UH and all your connections that you have and these folks as well, and providing possible internships, possible future careers to let these guys know that hey, kids, you don't have to go off in the mainland and never come back. There is a possibility for you to come back. And drones provide that, don't they? Here, exactly, in a big yes. way in Hawaii, that we and so so does the ability to uh, develop the processing software and such, and even the command and control software in the bird. I mean, the science and technology of the drone is available to us as well. Yes. There's none of that that's that's limited that we can't get access to and get kids inspired by. I was just thinking as you're saying that, I can think of a of a, a school field trip out to one of your sites, one of your work sites, where a couple of his kids come along and just get to see how this works in real operation. I think they would be really inspired. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we were talking about a program up at uh, Anui Nui. I don't think we've done it yet, but the idea was that in the highlands of the of the back of the valleys, uh, Albizia is a problem. We yes. just read about that in the paper the other day. So how about an Albizia survey yes. of the area, the, the, the 10 acres, 15 acres around, uh, around Anui Nui? and understand, have the kids understand, and their parents and the teachers understand what the, what threat that all that, all that uh, Abijia growth represents. species right there. And then figure out, let them 
construct a plan for how that would be controlled, removed, or altered in some way, and let the kids and the teachers in on the very plan that deals with their school and the potential resolution of that issue. Amazing. And, and how perfect would that be for quad rotors? Because it, you don't, we don't need big range. We don't need uh, you know the couple of miles of uh, mm -hmm. range. So that would be uh, a cool thing to uh, talk to our new friends about. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, what definitely. do you call to me? <laughs> um, so we do. We were approached um, on a similar project. Um, it's still in the talks, but it's on the Big Island, oh, dealing okay. with the Rapid Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it was DLNR that came to us, or came to one of our other pilots, and they're asking and talking to us, like, what could we do? How can we survey? And the, the topic of drones came up because the props don't generate a lot of wind um, wash. So it, they don't know, right? Scientists don't know what's causing the transfer of the rot from tree to mm -hmm. tree. So they think the drone would be a lot um, daintier than having a helicopter mm -hmm. flying mm -hmm. over. With uh, yeah, tons of down wash and everything. Yeah. Do you know a gentleman named Dr. Ryan Perroy at UH Hilo? No, I do not. Let me make that connect introduction for you. He's doing, uh, he's been doing work for five years with drones on, on lava in Pahoa, and mm -hmm. then also on the invasive species on the Rapid Ohio death. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he'd be very interested in partnering with you on that thinking process. Also a gentleman named Y. Lee here in Oahu, who works uh, with the Urban Canopy organizations. And so he, he and, and Ryan together have algorithms that can understand what the trees are that you see by the leaf shape and by the crown and canopy uh, function. So let's talk about that, about how we might hook you guys. We got two things for you already. We got the school project, <laughs> we got the project on Big Island, so we'll see if we can't do more when we get back from our first <laughs> break you. here. It is still the noon hour, Thursday, folks. Ted Ralston here, downtown Honolulu, with our guest, uh, Kainoa Jimenez. Kainoa, thanks for coming on again. Thank you. Uh, Landon. Landon Pomada and Eric Toretti. Toretti. Yes. Uh, from, uh, these two guys are from uh, Bowers, Kubo Bowers and Kubota Consulting in uh, Waipahu. Yes. And of course, uh, Kainoa is from a lot of different places. Uh, we'll say Anui Nui School, Marinol School, oh, and, uh, uh, and Kolea Gold Yet right now. Yet to get global. <laughs> okay. That's guy, the plan. Hey, that's, that's, hey just because you live in Hawaii doesn't mean you can't think global. That's exactly right. And you can think more global because we have less limitations as yes. with why not. So anyway, we're just talking about drones in the construction industry, talking about drones in education, talking about uh, uh, projects that we might collectively conceive here. One thing that goes through my mind um, we need some kind of a professional organization or some way to tie people together like you and others, the others six in your company and others six coming. We got HECO, we got Monsanto coming online, we got uh, HDNC I think has something and uh, Water, uh, Water Bureau has something I believe. There's, there's bits and pieces all over the place. Is there a, 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 a like a strong central engineering or architecture um, professional society that we could, that we should take a story to and periodically update. Is, is, are there, I'm from aeronautical engineering, so I know that we don't have any of that here. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would think in the civil engineering and mechanical engineering, we probably have uh, uh, some organizations that, where there's periodic mm -hmm. gatherings. So I would like to suggest that we, together, the four of us, think about that. 
and take a story in. Yeah. And begin best practices, standards, and obeying the mm -hmm. rules and all that. It's exactly as you as you taught and exactly as you have been teaching. Yes. Uh, that would be a, a really good way to start spreading this thing because it's going to be the professional societies that are going to drive it in the right direction. Mm -hmm. We got three cases in Hawaii already of uh, relatively serious violations. We had one at the at the at the Hawaii Palace on uh, Onipa'a Day. We had one uh, on Kauai where a helicopter and a tourist drone. And I heard just recently at, at the airport here we had a close call. So there's folks who aren't either aren't paying attention or don't know the rules mm -hmm. or are. Uh, violating them in, in, in you know, uh, willfully, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we need to somehow spread the word. And if we can create a strong, positive word through the professional organizations, mm -hmm. that would be a really strong point. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you also that uh, Honolulu, well, Hawaii has uh, applied for a uh, this FAA Unmanned Air Systems Integration Pilot Program. We've applied to be one of the lead applicants. We don't know when we're, if we're going to get selected, May is selection time. I mean, FAA is going to pick 10 agencies, uh, jurisdictions to go figure out how to make drones work completely in their area. That is, uh, the delivery systems, uh, the professional systems, uh, education, uh, recreation, and make it all work. And to the point of starting to lead to local control of that functionality. So if, we, if we're successful, obviously we want to have you guys in. And, Certainly, call a goal in on the uh, educational mm -hmm. component. Capture on that whole message. Share it with the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. And there's a guy named George Purdy on the night. George, I hope you're watching. Uh, well, George. <laughs> uh, thinks the same way. So we got some we got some thinkers here in, in this area. So uh, in terms of what we might do at the university to assist you guys, uh, we're working with Pacific Command as well. There's always obviously there's a humanitarian assistance roles that mm -hmm. they play that are a function. That's why this is here. This thing mm -hmm. drops a life jacket mm -hmm. if you have somebody who needs a life jacket. Um, how how can you suggest to us in the world of either through the architecture department or the engineering department, how, how would you address them and tell them the findings you've come up with or the ideas you've got or what you'd like to see in five years in this domain that would as best assist the uh, design, architecture, and engineering and construction business, as an example? Are you go um, Basically, I, I think it, everything has to come down to just common knowledge of how the drones work first. And then if you understand that, then you can start implementing different things. Um, right now, I, I believe it's still fairly new. So um, I, I, to me, I think it's still within that brainstorming and just kind of figuring out exactly how to actually really can utilize or we can actually utilize it. I know if they've used it for like um, uh, disasters and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So like they use, utilize it, like you said, dropping like life jacket or even supplies and whatnot. So in that realm, that, that really fits on the civil side. Um, it can be used more, we're implementing on trying to use it for like design aspects and whatnot. So um, yeah, I think it's still fairly new, but um, I can see it starts as people start to really realize things, um, things can actually um, get much better, I guess. And to add to that, um, Kevin, our lead pilot, yeah. um, his goal one day is to be able to assist HFD um, in search and rescue. Um, last year when there was Hurricane Harvey, uh, there was an article, I think on um, NBC, where they talked about uh, app company called drone up it's basically a beacon for whoever drone pilots are in the area if they can help assist doing search and rescue if you have a drone um it kind of fell, fell in the lines of what kevin was thinking um so i pitched that to our team idea and a bunch of us did sign up um in case of an emergency we would take our personal drones and if the call came in we would go and try to help um, search and rescue or whatever help we can. I mean, I have a little tiny Mavic. I, I probably could drop some Band-Aids <laughs> versus the uh, larger drones I could actually drop like a uh, life jacket or anything like that. I'm glad you brought that up. I, I, I think that's actually something the schools would be very interested in too. Yes. How can their drones help in a situation mm -hmm. like that? If you've got this, this connection with this drone, what, what was Drone it? up. I'd like to know more about that once we're off the show here. But uh, do you know Howard not only done at HFD, 
No, I do not. Well, actually, make, glad to make the connection. He's sort of the, the leader of the, the, the very spirited leader of uh, using drones in HFD's work, and then mm -hmm. Roger Wong is HPD. Mm -hmm. So having you guys meet with them, I think, would be the, where this thing could start, where this uh, spark could get lit that mm -hmm. provides a drone task force. And Jay Fidel out here in the st studio has been after that. Everybody's been after that. Willow Sparrow in the Capitol. Senator Sparrow has been after that. How do we get a drone task force stood up that's qualified, certified, licensed, and and can perform mm -hmm. in a volunteer form when we get when it when it when it's needed. Mm -hmm. So that's something I think people would like to talk about. That's part of this FAA pilot project mm -hmm. as well. So, so at this point in time, anyway, it, this show goes really fast. It, it, we, we, you know, I can think of ten more ideas we could have that we won't be able to pull off here until the next time you come back on. But at this point yes. in time, Eric Tarate yes. and Landon Hara. And uh, Kainoa Jimenez, yes, thank you. Thanks for coming on again. Thank you. And thank then, you, uh, we'll we'll do something with these projects we cooked up right here on the show. Sounds okay? good. We'll get you back in three months, and we'll see how the projects are going. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Right. Thank, we'll you. Get on thank you. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank, thank you, everybody. You.